Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, welcome to my talk. I'm Hyung Seok Han from uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, query X, symbolic query on the compile code for finding bugs in COTS binaries. Uh, this work was done during my PhD, and this is joint work with my colleague in theory and my advisor in Suyun. So as you already know, static analysis is one of the most popular techniques for automatic bug finding because it can achieve high code coverage without difficulty uh, of generating some uh, corresponding inputs. But it suffers from the trade-off between the scalability and accuracy. So for example, uh, it should be context and path sensitive to be accurate, but it causes some scalability issues. So to mitigate these issues, some extensible static checking tools such as CodeQL, Yarn, and Sys have been proposed. Uh, they take the domain knowledge of human analysis about the target program in the form of a query and leverage it to the analysis and get some result. So basically, they support some query to use syntactic analysis and data flow analysis and symbolic analysis where the query is based on the source code. Then you may wonder how to handle the binary. So similar to the previous ones, there are also extensible static checking tools for binary, such as Anger and Bob. But they only support some queries based on their binary intermediate representations so that the human analysis should write the query based on their binary IR. But however, most analysts are not familiar with a binary IR, and they want extensible static checking tools based on the decompiled code. This is because analysis mostly work with a decompiled code due to its high-level information, such as high-level control flow and types, as in the below figure, where the left one is a decompiled code and the right one is binary IR. But binary IR is more uh, are more uh, analyzer friendly so that uh, uh, queries of previous tools are based on binary IRs. So in summary, extensible static checking tools for source code can handle binaries, and the previous tools for binaries suffer from some inconsistency between the queries and analysis. So at this point, you may think the decompiled code also looks like the source code. Then how about fitting the decompiled code into the source code analyzer? So uh, the, the previous paper already fed the decompiled code from Hexray to uh, CodeQL and Yarn. And as a result, compared to the tool with the source code, original source code, this, this got less true positive and more first positive because of the differences between the source code and the decompiled code. So for example, here are the source code and its decompiled code. If you see the original source code in the left, it is very straightforward that source code analyzers figure out which x and y value will be printed. But it is not in the decompiled code because it is undefined behavior without recognizing memory layout information. So this means that the previous source code analyzer analysis tools are binary unaware. Therefore, we propose extensible static checking tools for decompiled code and describe how to support symbolic query on the compiled code, which require the most accurate analysis in three uh, methods. And basically, we have uh, three goals that overcome the weaknesses of previous works. But today, I'm going to focus on the first two things. And please check our paper for the last ones. So the first goal is to do binary aware analysis on the decompiled code. So to achieve this, we introduce our new IR named DNR, which stands for Decompiler Neutral Representation, and do analysis based on it. And the second goal is to support analysis-friendly symbolic query. For this goal, we design symbolic query based on the compiled code and allow to register callbacks, which will be executed during the symbolic analysis. And also, we leverage JavaScript syntax, which is one of the most popular language, uh, to make our query more analyst friendly. And here is the overview of our system, query X. At the beginning, uh, the decompiler module takes the target binary and produces the decompile code. And the lifter module translates the, the decompile code into DNR. Then the query interpreter module gets the analysis rule by executing the query. 
And lastly, based on the analysis rule and the lifted DNR, the analyzer model performed the corresponding analysis and gets some result. Uh, this is uh, how CoreX works, and now let's take a look at the first uh, goal and our approach. And as I mentioned before, the decompiler code has some issues. The first issue is that decompile code misses some binary embedded data, like global variable information. So to be binary aware analysis, we should consider its initial value and permissions, which are now appeared on the uh, decompile code itself. So we add program data section, which contain binary embedded data to DNR. And the second one is that the decompile code has some binary dependent code, uh, such as memory layer related code, which I described before. So we resolve this issue by considering memory layouts while lifting. Now let's briefly check how uh, we lift the decompile code into DNRs. So at the beginning, we calculate the stack memory layout to figure out where each stack variable is stored. And based on that, we lift the stack variable accesses. So for example, the assignment of variable v1 is translated like this. And note that we also lift global variable reads by loading the uh, memory in the corresponding uh, addresses, which is described with the program based addresses. And we can correctly interpret this based on the program data section, which I mentioned before. And using this process, we can keep lifting the decompile code to DNR. Then you may ask, should we write the queries based on DNR? Uh, our answer is no, because we can write uh, queries based on the uh, decompile code because the DNR contains which decompile code is uh, lifted to the corresponding DNR. And next, let's check uh, how uh, our query looks like. So imagine that we are writing a query, uh, a simple query for a simple heap overflow where the uh, main copy size can be greater than the uh, destination buffer size. And here is a part of the query. And this query performs some symbol execution from each function entries based on the symbolic rules specified by sim rule function. And first, the sim execute function recursively traverses AS nodes in the uh, function and calls sim rule function to specify analysis rules. In this case, it register collect alloc and check main copy function as a call callbacks of malloc and main copy function call respectively. And collect, a uh, collect alloc function will be executed right after the malloc function call during symbol execution. And it will save allocate addresses and their sizes to the current symbolic state. And check main copy function will check whether the uh, main copy size uh, can be greater than the destination buffer size. And here is the detail of a collect alloc function. Collect alloc and other callback function uh, take the target AST and the current symbolic state as argument. And by calling get value method of the uh, current state, current symbolic state, it can get the symbolic value of the corresponding AST node. So in this example, it gets the allocate addresses and its size. And after that, it just pushes the address, allocated addresses and the size to the current symbolic state. And similar to the collect alloc function, check main copy function first gets the destination buffer addresses and the copy size of main copy function calls. And it iterate the allocate addresses in the current symbolic state and find the destination buffer size. It then checks whether the copy size can be greater than the destination buffer size under the current uh, pass constraints using these three. So finally, we can get uh, a following query for a si simple heap overflow. And now let's write a query for a heap overflow due to uh, integer overflow in the allocation size, which was uh, in Windows kernel. Uh, this is a special case of a heap overflow, which allocation size is two byte type and not constant. So we can easily uh, implement a query based on the previous uh, query by adding the checks uh, for whether the uh, allocation size is two byte type and it is constant. It is not constant. As a result, we could find a heap overflow bug as we uh, described in the query. And in total, we found seven new heap overflow bugs in Windows kernel. And we also compare anger and query acts in terms of query writing for this example, where the left one is anger query and the right one is query acts query. 
And in total, Angular requires uh, 267 lines of code, while Query X requires 33 lines of code. This is because binary IRs do not uh, have high level information such as type and constant value, so that we should write more code for uh, this in Angular Query. And it means that uh, Query X can support a more analysis friendly query than Angular. And to show that Query X can support diverse queries and its effectiveness, we evaluated on the data set of aforementioned ICHS paper. And as a result, Query X found more uh, true positive while having less uh, first positive than others. So this is because Angular Query does not support uh, decompiled code so that we cannot leverage the high level information in the decompiled code, like type information, when writing Angular Query. This makes us to uh, write uh, the analysis rule more broadly, which lead to uh, more first positives. In addition, uh, Yarn and CodeQL missed uh, many bugs because they are not binary aware. And we also wrote four kinds of queries and applied them uh, to Windows kernel to find zero days. As a result, Query X found uh, 15 new vulnerabilities, including 10 CVs, and earned $180K as a bug bounty. And this is the end of my talk, and please refer our paper if you are interested in more detail about these items. Thank you. All right, questions for our speaker? Please. Thanks for the talk. I wonder if you have compared the size of the code QL query with your query, because you gave the dif difference with uh, this other tool, but not code QL. It sounded like code QL query would possibly be comparable to yours. Uh, uh, actually, code QL does not support similar execution, as I know, so we cannot uh, compare code QL and query acts directly, but for the uh, paper, uh, the data set in the ICHCCS paper, uh, query X query was uh, Smaller than uh, query X query because it just uh, use a data simple data flow analysis and some syntactic analysis. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you were using the hex rays to do the lifting. Uh, to decompile. Yeah, yeah. So have you analyzed the semantic equivalence of the lifted hex rays versus the actual binary? Uh, actually, we do not uh, check that. Yeah, but uh, I believe that a future work will check uh, the uh, semantic of the compiled code, yeah. So uh, our analysis of Ghidra as a lifter shows optimistically around 70% semantic equivalence. And so you know, using the lifted code, if you don't know where the semantic equivalence will fail is problematic. Yeah. All right, let's thank our speaker. Thank you.